What up, everybody? It's CryptoFur at Steemit.com, CrystalBearKalaikai at Facebook.com, and G underscore mail underscore baby at Twitter. I just wanted to do a quick uh, follow-up to uh, the President's State of the Union speech. Ah, oh, man, I am blown away. Beautiful speech. Awesome speech. Way to go. He really put the enemies in the in the target sites right there, in the crosshairs. He's letting them know, we're pointing at you. If you're a Democrat and you oppose the, uh, the, the clamping down of our borders and the control of illegal immigration, you are the enemy of the state because the state is the American people. And anytime you go against the best interests of the United States, you're going against the best interests of the American people. Quite beautiful. He also put it down that our economy is doing very well. <coughs> doing very well because of his policies. And the Democrats, after, I know their response is immediately, oh, he's going to ride on the coattails of the Obama administration. But what the president laid down in the State of the Union right now is that many of the problems resulted of the policies of the Obama administration. The DACA program, the Dreamers. He talked about how Americans are Dreamers too. But the Democrats are only focusing on the illegal immigrants who are actually making it possible for criminal illegal aliens to get in here. The gang members from El Salvador, the Mara Salva Trucha, MS-13, they're coming in and they're killing our people, our children, our dreamers. But the Democrats keep standing for the illegal immigrants and claiming they're the dreamers. What about our people? The president even stood up for us against the United Nations and the, the countries that were against us changing our, uh, uh, against his claim that the U.S. Embassy should be in Jerusalem. And yet we donated $20 billion to those same countries. So he's like, you know what, you're on blast, guys. You're enemies of the state. When you go against our interests and we're giving you money, we're not going to give you money anymore. Great. He even said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to urge Congress members to remove people who are disappointing the American people. So all the corrupt individuals, he's put you on blast. And he lets you know that Guantanamo is going to stay open for terrorists. Now, terrorists can be a broad term. If you are against the state of the United States or the people of the United States, you are a terrorist. You are going against our best interests. You are an enemy of the state. And now Guantanamo is your future home. He has prepared a place for you. A great, great speech. He's gonna low. He he said he's putting in priority now, lowering prescription drug prices, and he said, "I will do it." Watch. I think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal speech. The Democrats, he really put it in their court. You can join us, or you can prove yourself to be a terrorist. Now, a lot of dictators have done that in the past. They said, "You're either with me or against me," and so on and so forth. But in these instances, when you have Democrats that are doing things like giving national secrets to foreign entities, murdering staffers like Seth Rich because they're trying to leak the fact that you are controlling the free votes of the Democratic primaries, things like that, where you're murdering people, undermining the security of our state, giving state secrets to other, other enemies and, and other nations, you... Our, our enemy. Sorry, someone was texting me. And so the Democrats can claim that he's riding on the coattails of President Obama. But President Trump has done nothing of the sort. He's shown. He said, we are against the regime of Iran. Well, President Obama wasn't against the regime of Iran. You can look for YouTube videos where he sent pallets of U.S. dollars to the regime of Iran. And it's an oppressive regime. The Iranian people are trying to free themselves of it. How is that riding on the coattails of Obama? The DACA program, again. President Trump is giving a merit-based system now. He's giving the dreamers a chance. You're here. You were brought here as a child, illegally, by your parents. We're not going to deport you. We have compassion. We're a compassionate people. But we expect you to contribute to our society instead of tear it down and criticize Americans and call us racist. No, 
my family, me, Cryptofer, Christopher, Crystal Bear, Kalaikai, my family, both sides are immigrants. They came to this country legally, legally. And if you judge me by the color of my skin because I'm light skinned, you are the racist. My, my dad came here from the Philippines. He struggled to come here from the Philippines. At the sacrifice, his brothers and sisters, some of whom are somewhat greedy, but they still sacrificed them, their educations and their trip here to the U.S. to pool the money together to send my dad here so that he could become a, a very well-known physician in our community. He could make good money, educate all of them, and bring them here. And he did. And they all had a chance. My dad is an immigrant, the first of our generation here from the Philippines. My grand great grandfather came here to Ellis Island, didn't have the $25 he needed to get in through immigration. He overheard, he didn't even speak English, but he overheard some other Polish immigrants talking about what it would cost to get in. And he quickly took the jacket off of his back and sold it for $25 so that he would have enough money to pay entrance to the United States. So you Democrats want to talk about we're a nation of immigrants? Wrong! We're a nation of legal immigrants. We're a nation of people who follow laws, who respect nation borders, who follow what the requirements are for us to be successful. Democrats don't understand that because if you look at many of them, they're breaking the laws. They think they, can, they have to cheat to succeed. And President Trump showed by the one Korean man today who had his legs and arms amputated trying to escape from North Korea that when people have a strong spirit for freedom and they're against centralization and central authorities telling them what to do, they can do great things. doesn't matter what the odds are against you. You can stand up to these Democrats. And if you are a Democrat and you're wise and you realize you're in trouble now, you need to start changing your ways. The last great Democrat who was more like a Republican was John F. Kennedy. And today the Democrats put forward a young Joe Kennedy to try to give a rebuttal against the President's State of the Union. So they tried to use a great Kennedy's name or use a Kennedy's name against a former great Kennedy so that a Republican could not use the Kennedy image and inspire the American people. The Democrats resist inspiration for America. They resist change for America. They like to use things like hope and change for their uh, their campaign slogans and their you know their their mottos. But the reality is they're resistors of change instead of uh, being progressive, truly progressive, truly progressive people bring about positive change for everybody. And so far, nothing positive has happened in this nation until President Trump has come in. So this State of the Union has been phenomenal. The, the other thing that's great, the bankers wanted to crash our economy and blame it on President Trump. But Trump in the State of the Union address has shown now that in his one year, great things have happened. Democrats are trying to say he's riding on the coattails of Obama. Well, if that's the case, there should have been some positive change in his last year in his two terms as president. He had eight years, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? President Obama had eight years. At least in the last three, this positive stuff should have shown up if it was really his policies, right? Just magically now, President Trump has only been in one year and all these things are good. All this change is occurring. Really, truly, you need to think that through. But anyway, the bankers wanted to collapse it and blame it on Trump. And I think it's funny that the State of the Union was today. And today is the 60th anniversary that the U.S. put the first satellite into orbit. The first satellite ever that we know of in world history into orbit. And the Federal Reserve is meeting today and tomorrow to decide what to do for the economy. So if the economy craps out tomorrow, 
guess who gets the blame? It's the central banks, the central authorities, the centralized people, the banks themselves, the money powers. I don't know if they really want to do that. But they are still going to raise interest rates. They have no choice. Their, their dollar is going in the toilet. The Federal Reserve note. Pick up your dollar bill and read on it. It is a Federal Reserve note. It is not a, a note of the United States. It is a Federal Reserve note. So it's owned by the Federal Reserve Bank. Their Federal Reserve currency, their fiat currency, is going in the toilet. We've been watching the value drop, 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 drop. Today you saw a sell-off in all assets so that the dollar value could be maintained. Because they want to scare people. They want people to go, what, are the, what is the Fed going to do? We're afraid. Let's sell out of all other assets. By selling out of all other assets, you have to buy something else when you sell. So you're selling assets to buy dollars to go to cash. So they bought the Federal Reserve note. So the power of the Federal Reserve note is there. And then when the Fed raises interest rates, the value of those notes will go up. And what will the Fed do? The Fed is going to take those notes and buy government bonds to support the bonds because the bonds are paid back in interest and it signifies the health of the economy so now they'll have to they'll have to do it even if they raise interest rates so you're gonna see monetization of the bond market so like I said the if the economy cr craps out tomorrow and we see crashing and we see this collapse that I've been long predicting now uh, the blame lies solely in the court of the Federal Reserve. Very, very interesting timing. So President Trump put out his uh, State of the Union now, and now the enemies have been put on blast. They've been put on notice. You're in the crosshairs. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, I've got short positions. I haven't added to them. I just, when I lose a little bit, I unwind it, and then I wait till a rally, and then I buy in again. So I constantly am reissuing my exposure to the short side of the market so if the markets do crash tomorrow i've hedged my accounts i'll do a video about hedging so that you guys can understand what the concept of hedging is and why everybody's afraid about the fact that there are derivatives on bitcoin now but the reality of bit the the derivatives on bitcoin is it allows you yes it allows potential manipulation of the bitcoin market but we're not there yet we don't have enough interest in bitcoin yet for them to try to suppress it but at the same time a hedge allows you insurance to the downside so anyway it's gonna be interesting to see what happens tomorrow we're on the blood moon so the sacrifice moon of the uh the jewish faith and the jewish prophecies in the old testament and uh and i think that we're gonna find out who's really gonna get sacrificed i think the demons of this world are gonna really get sacrificed and trump is actually making it so that the good people have a chance the children of the light have an opportunity to make wealth and to manage their funds the way the children of the dark have in the past. For so long, the children of the dark have become rich on the backs of the children of the light and have managed their funds to make themselves even more rich. Now, the children of the light have a chance. They've been educated about the evils and they've been educated about how that money was made and they can now do the same for themselves. So this is our time, the age of, the Aquari uh, age of Aquarius, the time of true change, for us to change our ways, to get out of debt, to get out of slavery. If you truly are against slavery, get out of debt. All the, the politicians that talk about uh, being against slavery and being for you often are the ones that have policies that get us further and further into debt. And you need to really review those policies and really think about that. If you truly are against slavery, stop calling people racist and pointing fingers because it's really on you whether the world is racist or not. You're putting racist people into power if their policies hurt you and you don't know it. You're not taking the time to figure out what policies are good and what policies are bad. Then you're helping the racist people. So stop calling people racist and start figuring out who truly is racist. Don't just go by, okay, there are only white people looking at this guy or there are only black people listening to this guy. Don't look at those things. Look at their policies. Do they support liquor stores on every corner in the ghettos? Do you support liquor stores on the corners of every ghetto? Do you buy liquor on the corner stores of every ghetto? Then you're supporting a lot of the, the downfall of the ghetto. Do you buy marijuana and smoke it everywhere in the ghetto? 
Because I can tell you, I used to do marijuana, and it did not help me. It made me a paranoid person. It destroyed my memory, and it made me very lazy in a lot of ways. And I've changed since I've quit. I quit many years ago. I got into it when I was in high school, and I got got into it just because it was trendy. But I quit, and my life changed. I've become more responsible. I've become more confident. I've become more sure and more responsible in a lot of the ways that I do things. Because before, I was lazy. My mind was going away. I would sleep for too long. I would see time going by so fast and realize I was wasting it. So you can talk positively about the benefits of marijuana. And I believe there are benefits to marijuana. Don't get me wrong. I believe there are medical benefits for people who have cancer, who have glaucoma, things that our FDA doesn't want because it puts comp- direct competition for the drug industry and the pharmaceutical industries that make billions off of keeping us sick, but just keeping us well enough so we keep buying their drugs. Some things in marijuana can cure it completely. Don't get me wrong. But those who are doing it rec- recreationally and you just say, you know, it doesn't inhibit my driving. It doesn't, you know, keep kidding yourself. Keep kidding yourself. Look at your finances. Figure out, are you in the right place? Are you doing things right? So I'm all for the war against drugs. However, I don't believe our police should be going against the marijuana. People want marijuana. It's up to us, the people, to decide, do we really need it? We should have a right to try. And this is what this is another great thing from the State of the Union. He said people should have the right. If they're dying of cancer, they're dying. They know their deathbed is coming. They should not be limited in their choices of what to do. The FDA shouldn't tell them, oh, you can't take this drug because it'll kill you. What? They're dying. Who cares? Let them try it if they believe it can save them. Because you never know. It might. The whole symbol of medicine is the caduceus. The staff with the snakes intertwined around it. That is the basis for my faith, the Catholic faith. How Moses held up a staff with a serpent on it so that he would cure by the power of God, all the people who were bitten by the asps, by the snakes that came and actually bit them with venom. And the Catholic faith believes that Jesus Christ is our serpent on a staff. Behold the body of Christ. So we behold him. We look upon him. We gaze upon him that he may heal us. But more than that, John chapter 6, the gospel according to John chapter 6 Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life within you. We consume the Lamb of God and the great serpent of God, that he may heal us and bring us everlasting life and save us from the clutches of the devil or death on the other side. Death exists here on this side as well. It is the corrupt enemy terrorist people who do things against our best interests. It is in us too, spiritually, when we do things against our own best interests. So this is the time, the age of Aquarius, to change. Get your house in order. If you're bankrupt, figure out why you're bankrupt. Stop blaming other people, because it's you. It's you taking on things that you shouldn't take on. Buying things you can't afford. Taking on debt that you can't afford. Stop it now. Cut it out now. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. If you owe money, pay it off. Get it done now. Get it over with. And that's not a judgmental thing. That's a fact. Do you like being in that burden? I never liked being in any, any burden, ever. I had gout recently because I overindulged. There was a period of time during Christmas and Thanksgiving that I was eating all kinds of meat. I was eating all kinds of seafood. I was drinking alcohol, drinking everything that contributes to gout, sweets. And I woke up one morning and I thought I broke my foot. I couldn't walk, but I couldn't stand the pain. And when it spread to my thumb, I realized this is gout. I had it before, a long time ago when I had indulged. And I, I realized it when I woke up in the morning, again, I woke up in the morning, felt nothing until I stepped down. And it felt like someone took a bat, a baseball bat, and pounded my knees. It was the most horrible feeling. Well, this was different. felt this time like someone had pounded the bottom of my foot just under my big toe. It was like the ball of my foot was super achy. It felt like I just fractured my foot. 
I couldn't put weight on it. And then I realized I had gout. So what did I do? I fasted for a week. I ate nothing during the day. I only had one meal at night and I made sure I didn't eat any meat. I controlled my sugar. I controlled, I didn't eat any seafood. And I drank straight distilled water for that whole day, for that whole week. And my gout was gone in a week. And I was able to walk normally again. Most people, what will they do? They'll go to the pharmaceutical companies and they'll take drugs that will quell the pain and remove some of the uric acid that causes the pain. But the reality of it is, it is their habits that are keeping them in pain, causing them to hurt. They just are not willing to change it. The pain of changing is worse than the pain of staying the same. But to me, any kind of pain where it hurts my feet, I don't want it. So I changed and I feel great. Great, I feel so much better because of it. I even lost a little bit of weight too. I was starting to get a dad belly because you know my new kids coming, and everybody gets dad bod because they you know they're sitting a lot more at work or at home. You know, they're eating more. I've controlled my eating now. Even at church, my my last Sunday, I went to church and everybody's like, "You lost weight." Glad you noticed because I did it myself. I controlled my own habits. That's all we have to do is control our habits. And it's the same as debt. If you get into debt, you got into it slowly. You can get out of it slowly. Just discipline yourself. Do you like the pain and the embarrassment? If you don't like the pain and the embarrassment of debt, get out of it. Control it. I have a friend who has a debt service. Uh, If I refer people to him, he will pay me a referral fee. I'll let you know that straight from the get-go. But his his debt uh, service will help you get out of debt. There are other things where I don't get a referral fee for it. I should, but I'm going to tell you right now. Dave Ramsey has been pretty good at getting people out of debt. He's got a good program for it. Other things I'm not so keen on uh, Dave Ramsey, like investing, his investing philosophy, whatever. That's It's super, super conservative. But any change is good change if you're in a bad situation in that case. So anything towards a positive is a good, good change. So... I'll support him in that. So I recommend Dave Ramsey. If you don't know how to manage yourself, your funds. So with that kind of with that, I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that tonight's State of the Union was excellent. And the Democrats are gonna keep resisting. I don't know what you're resisting. You're resisting the success of our president, and he has not done anything to harm the US people. So resistance is not called for in this moment in time. Resistance is something you do when he's harming the people. That's why a lot of us Republicans were resisting President Obama because he was even hurting the black people. Their unemployment skyrocketed. Number of black people on welfare increased. That has all changed now. So, what are you resisting? What do you resist? Think about it. Don't just agree with the Democrats because they sound good. Think about it. What are you resisting when they ask you to resist? Look at their lives. What are these people? Who are these people you're following? And what do they really stand for? All right, y'all. Have a good night. God bless America. I think he really has blessed America. He's given us a second chance to do something great. And if the banks decide to crash us tomorrow, we'll get out of it. As the president has said, we come together in times of disaster and we find a way out. And I've already posted many videos on YouTube about everyday carry. I may do another video about it because you need to have a certain kind of mind state when you're carrying things. Uh, I've posted things about active shooter. I've posted things about growing plants. I've posted things about investing. And that's my whole focus on my videos is that you come out a better person on the other end. So God bless America. God bless us all. I love you guys. Stay up, and we have a bright future ahead of us. Take care. Like, subscribe, notifications, steam, re-steam, upvote. You know the deal. I love you guys. Take care.